This is for the commissioner. Excuse me? Tell him it's all there. What's all there? It. I don't think I should be doing this. It's all right. It's money he lent me for my wife's operation. You tell him Paulie Pants is very grateful. He wants to see you. I told you never to come here. Sometimes a man don't do what he's told. I'm the police commissioner. It's not safe. Who saw you come in here? Just the secretary. Well, now we'll have to kill her. Lucille, could you come in here? Uh, sir, I've got a lot of work to do at the 89th precinct on the other side of town. Lucille, uh, this is Polly Pentangeli. The biggest pain in the ass ever to leave <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> Second biggest. Hey, what are you doing here? I thought you were in California. I got homesick from my mother's lasagna, and you guys are lucky. Hey, Lucille, listen, I'm sorry. I, I came in to give Tony a hard time. He turned it around on you. This means you're not going to kill me? Today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure, Polly. Anyone who gives the commissioner a hard time is OK by me. Hey! <laughs> hey, are you going to stay for dinner, right? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't miss it. Manicotti. No, oh, Rachel told me I stopped by your house. Uh, uh, Diane with you? No, not this trip. Hey, Polly, what color earrings was Lucille wearing? Gold. What color tie you got on? Brown? <laughs> <laughs> you call yourself an investigator, eh? Uh, this new? No, 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 it's a five. How quickly they forget, eh? <laughs> I'll get this back. Yeah, next life. Uh. I was uh, putting the money into my purse when he grabbed me. He threw me down onto the pavement. Did you get to see his face? Oh, God, he just hit me over and over. Laura. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? Well, was there anything identifiable in your purse? Uh, something he might try to sell, you know, something we could trace? Just my credit cards. Miss Daly, can I get you a cup of coffee? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so that really set off all the fire alarms at St. Mary's. Then he stood under the stairway to watch all the nuns run out. He thought he could get a glimpse of what was underneath all those black skirts. I don't think that was my idea. Ah, you, me, one of us came up with it one night down at the batting cages. Oh, the Carnegie Street batting cages. I haven't thought of them in 20 years. Yeah. We made a lot of plans over fastballs at Carnegie Street. Yeah, some of them even worked out. David, honey, come and help me with dessert. So what do nuns wear under those black skirts? Now. So. You're gonna tell me why you're really here? I told you. You can't get good Italian cooking in L.A. And Diane and I split up is all. Look, Tony, you know how these mixed marriages are. It's 50-50. You married Rachel. She's Jewish. You're Catholic. It worked. I married Diane. She's L.A. I'm Brooklyn. It didn't. So, that's it. No more women. I'm gonna concentrate 100% on putting away the bad guys. Just made D3 homicide. Yeah, well, it's not exactly police commissioner, but, uh... So that's why you're here. You just need a good dose of New York crime to get you ready for the new promotion. No, no, what I need is a dose of R&R. &R. Come on, hang out with me at the precinct. East Bridge isn't exactly East L.A., but we got our share of killers, drug dealers, and bloody street crime. You really know how to sweet talk a guy. Coffee, dessert, and uh, after dinner entertainment in the family room. 
I picked these up just for you, Paulie. Yeah, that's sweet. So what's the entertainment? Arnie. He just got married. They eloped with a phone sex operator. <laughs> I always admired that guy. Look, he sent this videotape from Tahiti. Are we on? It's the red, and use the zoom, too. Um, hi, Rach. Hi, Dave. Tony. Um, well, here it is. This is, the, this is the greatest business opportunity I've ever developed. It's, it's perfect for a world with a depleting ozone layer. This is an all-natural sunscreen, okay? It's made of guava jelly and vanilla extract. And uh, are, we in, are we in focus? Okay, good. Um, okay, now the natives down here, they swear by this stuff. And I mean, let's face it, have, have you ever seen a Tahitian with a sunburn? <laughs> Anyway, I, I, I negotiated a very advantageous export deal with Willy Kamuamua. He's my guava jelly connection. And not only does this stuff protect you from UV rays, it also has a, a very special added benefit. I want to watch, watch this. Um, if, let's say that the sun, you know, if the sun goes behind a bank of clouds for a few minutes, all you got to do is you scrape a little off, you put it on bread, and boom, you got lunch. <laughs> That's cool. That's disgusting. Hey, Arnie. What? Oh, okay. Just a second. That—that that was Willie Tamuamua. Now he's, you know, he's a very nice guy, but he—he he doesn't have business savvy. You know, I feel like I just bought Manhattan for twenty bucks worth of beads. <laughs> I'm gonna have two hundred cases of this stuff drop shipped to your house. So, look, I got to go, but uh, I'll send another tape in a few days. Um, so long, or as we natives like to say, pot of high. Willie, okay, we're going to talk marketing. Pot of high to you, too. As long as that means be well and stay away a long time. Another cannoli, Polly? Rach, you know how to get to my heart. Ms. Daly, you're about to see five men, and they all match the description you gave us yesterday, okay? Mm. Ready. <laughs> Profile. your purse. Boy's a murderer. <laughs> Laura, we're trying to identify the man who took your bag last night. That boy's a murderer. <laughs> believe me, I know how crazy this sounds. I'm a school teacher. I don't believe in ghosts. I hardly ever read my horoscope. But you've been having strange dreams. Memories, really. I constantly ever since the attack. When that boy grabbed my purse, I felt the same panic that I felt then. Then? When I saw the murder. A boy. He's wearing one of those, uh, those high school jackets with an eight. He killed another boy in the woods. Miss Daly, you're a responsible citizen. Don't you think if you had actually seen this, if it were real and not just a bad dream, you'd have reported it to the police? I was so afraid. I was just trying to concentrate on the radio. They interrupted the song for a report. Sputnik. Sputnik? 
Wasn't that 56, 57? Yeah, it was 57. Yeah, that was the year my brother ran away. Oh, oh, my God! Oh. I saw the boy that killed my brother. 35 years ago? My parents, they, they thought that he ran away. I can, I can show you where, where it happened. I know this is the place. I can see it. I remember. Boss, uh, we can't find a thing. Please, don't give up. I'm sorry, Laura. There's nothing here. Okay, let's pack it in! Whoa, hey, you all right? I'm coming, hang on, hang on. Okay, I got you, I got you, all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. I owe you one. Just one? This thing's gotta be 12 feet deep. You could have been... Tony, take a look at this. I looked it up in their yearbook. Zachary Taylor High had three sports teams in 1957, Stephen Daly's class, baseball, football, and basketball. Each team had number eights. Joey Heim played second base, Mark Crawford, quarterback, All-State, led the team to the state finals, and Timothy Perello, basketball center. The team stunk. That's the guy. Why do you say that? Hmm, geeky kid. You know, probably grew too fast. Six foot two and weighed 100 pounds. Never had a date, repressed. Strong arm. They didn't jam it in those days. Ah, it's him, Perello. Pick him up. Ah, it's the quarterback. Arrogant, hothead, used to have it his own way. A hero, someone you'd least expect. A strong arm. It's Crawford. It could be the second baseman. Nah. How do you know? Because he, he played, played second, second base. base. You guys are scary. We're on number eights today. Well, school only keeps records for when kids are in school. So what are we talking, 35 years? That's a long time ago. Don't these school administrators understand? They got to be prepared. There's no statute of limitations on murder. Class reunion. They'd know. Carmela, bring me that yearbook and find out who's the chairman of the 57 class reunion committee. We'll pay him a little visit. Let them reminisce about their old classmates. Okay, drive safely, ma'am. Have a nice day. Officer! Officer. My child is missing. Missing? Gone. Not where he's supposed to be. Disappeared. Andy left home early this morning. He promised he'd be home by 11. Well, it's only 11.30. He's only 14. Okay, Mr. Um, DeMille. Mr. DeMille, don't panic. Sometimes 14-year-olds can be a little mischievous. It's not Andy. He knows how I worry about him. Okay. I'll tell you what. You give me the name of his school, mm -hmm. your home address. Mm -hmm. You have a picture? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've seen this kid before. Yeah, he hangs out at Max's video arcade. Okay. You know, our 35th reunion is this year. I'm gonna have to be getting in touch with everybody pretty soon. Okay, now, this is our class valedictorian, Russell Ketteringham. Um, Ms. Sorensen, um, mm -hmm. we're mainly interested in uh, these three men. Oh, okay. Joey Heim. Joey Hahn moved to Miami, I think. Um, yeah, mm-hmm, see? Coach, junior college baseball. There's his address. Uh, what about Mark Crawford? Um, the quarterback. Now, there's a real hard luck story. You know, he was Allstate, and he got a scholarship to Syracuse, and then he got arrested, and I, I don't remember why. 
Went to Attica for a year. I couldn't believe it. I think he lives in Billings, Montana now. Yeah, there he is. Works on oil rigs. This last one, Perello. Oh, he's never made it to any class reunion. I don't know much about him, but I think he's still living in town. Yeah, there he is. There's his address. I don't know why we're even bothering. The quarterback did a year in Attica. It, it ain't over till it's over. Okay. Pardon me, Father. We're looking for a Timothy Perello. I'm Timothy Perello. <laughs> oh, boy, you sure can't pick them, Pants. You want I should put out a warrant for Mother Teresa? <laughs> right, go ahead. Enjoy your chocolate laughing, boy. Oh, I'm sorry, pal. You must have slipped a little bit out in L.A. I'm sending you down to the miners for reconditioning. <laughs> if Perello killed Daly, joining a seminary would be a perfect cover. Oh, same old stubborn Paulie. Can't admit you're wrong. Look, Laura Daly said her brother was murdered the night Sputnik went up, right? Yeah, so? What was that? What do I look like, an almanac? <laughs> October 4th, 1957. Nothing here on Stephen Daly's disappearance. But here's my quarterback, Mark Crawford. Says here they called him Killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read on, oh wise one. On the day Sputnik went up, Killer Crawford was leading his team to the state championships in Albany. Jeez, what do you know? We were both wrong. Both? No, I don't think so. Perello doesn't have an alibi like Crawford. You serious? You stick it to the priest? Paulie, it was the second basement. Bet you a hundred bucks. You're right. Hey, boss, we got a missing person. How long? Uh, about six hours. That's not missing, that's delayed. Wait it's a 14-year-old kid. We won't take any chances. Set up a six-neighborhood grid. Call the fire chief, tell him I want search teams. Yes, sir. Uh, you got a photo? Oh, yeah, you bet. Uh, oh. oh, Ronnie's got it. He's running off handbills. Tell him I want one on every telephone pole in the city. OK, listen, boss. I have a friend from high school who works over at the Sentinel. And if I get over there, like, right now, I could probably get him to print it in the next edition. Do it. All right. Good man, Stan Kelly. Bright, earnest, loves wearing the uniform. That'll change. Hey, boss, call Florida. I followed through on the uh, second baseman. And? He died two years ago. What did he die of? What does that matter? Hey, Sherlock, if he died in a violent crime, that could reflect on a history of violence. If it was suicide, it could be the cumulative act of 35 years of pent-up guilt. Maybe Joey Heim just couldn't live with himself anymore. How'd he die? Hit by a bus. Is the only one we can investigate. He's alive and he doesn't have an alibi. I say we nail him or clear him. Some of my first memories are, uh, are my grandmother taking me to church. I remember how it felt. No matter what was going on outside, we were safe. Surrounded by goodness. Are you telling me that someone walking inside those walls, a priest, is a murderer? Paulie, I may not be a practicing Catholic, but I, I learned a lot about decency from the nuns in St. Mary's. Father Danzer's lessons are a part of the reason why I am who I am today. This isn't Father Danzer, and it isn't your grandmother. Tony, this is a murderer. You're right. Any ideas? I said we just go up there and confront the guy. Don't deny it. We wouldn't have proven anything. To do it right, we got to flush him out. We could tell him we got a witness. I don't want to involve Laura. She's too fragile. 
But you're pretty sturdy. Okay, I'll bite. Today at the rectory, I was the only one to talk to him. He won't recognize your voice. He'll know my face. <clears throat> so don't show him your face. It's been years since I've been inside one of these things. Relax, we've done away with the trap door. Just say what you want to say. A long time ago, I witnessed a murder. That's terrible, but it's not a sin. You don't understand. I never said anything. It was 1957. I saw a boy kill another boy in the woods. Yes? It was out near the old shack. I think it was a WPA thing at one time. They had an argument. I didn't hear what was said, but he killed him. I was so afraid, I didn't say a word. But lately, I've been having nightmares. So tomorrow, I'm gonna square it with the police. But first, I wanted to square it with God. I'm sorry for keeping it a secret all these years. I'm sorry for being afraid. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace and absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's been dark for hours. If he was gonna do it, don't you think he'd be here by now? Tony, the guy's a parish priest. He's got to save evening mass, save a few souls. Then he'll show up at the scene of his crime. I'll bet you he won't. Father Perillo, police officers, you're under arrest. Dear God. Let go. Please. I'm a priest. Perillo, I know priests. I've learned from priests. And you, sir, are no priest. There was a girl. Prettiest girl I ever saw in my life. We were making love in the back seat of my car. Stephen Daly saw us. For weeks after that, every day he would taunt me, ridicule me. He threatened to tell my parents. You were that afraid of your parents? They thought I was a good Catholic boy. The truth would have killed him. So you killed Stephen Daly instead? I begged him, offered him money, anything. He laughed at me. We fought. He fell down, hit his head, lay still. I got scared and ran away. I never really thought he was dead. But the days went by, and he never showed up. I couldn't believe it. Believe it. Every day for 35 years, I'd wake up and I'd wonder, is today the day? I'd study, I'd pray, I'd try to do some good for someone. The sun sets, and I'm still free. And the next day, it happens all over again. You could have turned yourself in any time. What good would that have done? At least as a priest, I'm still of some use. There are people whose lives are better because of me. A man is dead because of you. Would going to jail have brought him back? I never spoke to that girl again. I never had another woman. I devoted my life to the service of others. In the long run, isn't that the better choice? That wasn't your decision to make. For 35 years, Stephen Daly's family wondered where he was. 
Woke up every morning hoping that was the day he'd come home. Wondered what they had done to make him run away. There's nothing you could do to make up for that. Or the good he might have done if he'd been alive. You were right. Even a priest can be a killer. He wasn't a priest when he did it, Tom. As far as I'm concerned, he's not a priest now. You know, even now, he's not being honest. He almost made it sound like an accident. Laura said she saw him smash the guy's head in with a rock. What are those? These are handbills with the missing little kid's picture on it. We're gonna put these up on every telephone pole in town. Ronnie, big bold letters, missing. Contact the East Bridge police. Ronnie, you wanna find this kid? Look in a bond. He and his pals are probably putting on a show. Huh? This is Mickey Rooney. No, oh, no, Mickey Rooney's an old guy with white hair, and he I... wasn't always. Haven't you heard of the old Andy Hardy movies? Boys Town, Captain's Courageous? I don't know. Captain Courageous was an Elton John album. Ronnie, that man thinks his son is Andy Hardy. He's got to go to an institution, and you've got to collect all these handbills. Call off the fire department. Make sure none of these pictures show up on any telephone poles anywhere. Yeah, yeah. OK, sorry. Well, I'm glad I caught that one. That could have been a disaster. Hey, boss, it took some coaxing, but my friend at the Sentinel, he did me a favor. <sighs> Well, at least they spelled your name right. Here it is. Special delivery. Arnie and Tahiti, part two. No, oh, wait a second. We're watching this. Hi. How's everything? We, we, we're doing fine here, all things considered. But, uh, Gloria, sweetie, could you, could you put on a little more zinc oxide, please? Hi. He got sun poisoning. Oh, no, with his light skin? No, with his light brain. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Tamuamua, he, he, he didn't tell me you had to leave the guava jelly on for six hours before going out in the sun. He, he wasn't straight with me, that Willie. And, 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 and I told him that I wanted my money back for the 200 cases of the sunscreen, and I told him that I wouldn't take ITA for an answer. I had to take ITA. So I've, 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 I've had enough of the tropics. I, as soon as I stop molting, we're, we're going to China. Because what with the British pulling out of Hong Kong and everything, I mean, there's plenty of business opportunities there, plenty of them. So we'll drop your tape when we get there. Pada hi. Bye. You know, that Willie Tamuamua, he, he, he conned me. Don't you know? get upset. No, it's just, I, you think you can trust a man in a grass skirt. <laughs> Poor Arnie. Poor us. We're related to him. <laughs> You got a great place here, Rachel. Great life. I'm very lucky. Yeah, so is Tony. If only you hadn't rejected me. I didn't reject you. Mm. Besides, that was high school. I still remember our kiss. Oh, we were 16. And Tony and I were fighting. Did you ever tell him about it? It wasn't important. Me neither. Want to grab some lunch? Hey. Always the bookworm, huh? 
What are you reading? The forensic report on Stephen Daly. Well, that's one way to work up an appetite. <sighs> So-called priest must have been a maniac. Coroner says the guy's skull was pounded almost literally into the ground. Then he was dragged to the old shack and thrown into the well. So? That wasn't Pirello's story. He says they fought. He knocked Daly down. Then he got scared and ran away. So he lied. He was confessing to a murder. Why would he lie about the details? He forgot. I mean, it's been 35 years. You saw his face. He's relived that day a million times in his mind. I don't think he's forgotten a thing. What, so all of a sudden you think this guy's innocent again? You just don't want to pay me my hundred bucks. Look, the judge set bail at a quarter million, meaning someone has to post 25 grand to get him out. His parish raised that money inside of 24 hours. He'll be back at his church by the time we finish lunch. Yeah, but I'll bet you nobody will be taking any walks in the woods with him anytime soon. It doesn't add up, Paulie. Forget he's a priest. A guy that inspires that kind of affection and loyalty isn't the kind of person who takes a rock and, and pounds someone's head into guacamole. You're serious, aren't you? I'm calling in a hypnotist from down in the city. Might be useful in a case like this. There must be a lot of details buried in Laura Daly's mind. Tony, she saw him do it, and he confessed to it. What more do you want? I want to know how Stephen Daly's skull got crushed. I want to know how his body got tossed in the well. Because those things happened. And I don't think Father Perillo did them. OK, bring the camera over. Father Perillo. Father, do you have a statement? No, please. Have you spoken to Laura Daly about her accusation? Thank you. Murderer! You're hey, a disgrace hey, to the church. Hey, Don't hurt her. No violence, please. Do you think you should resign from the priesthood, Father? What kind of support are you getting from the parish? Don't you have a statement? Welcome back, Father. Thank you. Hello, Father. I'd like to confess. Please, I need to confess to you. Come into my office. Don't you recognize me? You once called me the prettiest girl you ever saw. Sheila. Yeah. Sheila Sorensen. My gosh, I haven't seen you since. I know. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I've sinned against two men, and I've sinned against heaven, and I don't know if I can ever be forgiven. Anything can be forgiven if the penance is sincere. A long time ago, I loved a boy. A handsome, wonderful boy named Tim. One night, another boy, Stephen, saw us making love. After that, Stephen humiliated Tim. He said he was going to tell Tim's parents. Finally, the two boys fought in the woods. They didn't know I was there. But I watched. Tim ran away. Stephen lay on the ground. I knew when he woke up, he would tell Tim's parents. I knew they would never let Tim see me again. I smashed Stephen's head with a rock, and I hid his body in a well, and I said nothing. As time went by, I realized Tim must have thought he was the killer. But I said nothing. 
Even when you were arrested, charged with a murder you didn't commit, I said nothing. I murdered one man and condemned another one to a lifetime of guilt. I can never forgive myself. God can never forgive me. But as a man of God, as the only man I ever loved, Can you forgive me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I absolve you of your sins. <laughs> exactly what he was going to do. Your brother Stephen. He was going to dethrone the king. The king? Who was the king? Both of them, he said. The king and the queen. Her royal slyness. That's what he called her. I remember he was almost crying when he said that. Did he tell you this himself? I don't think he said 10 words to me his entire life. I was listening outside his door. How long after that day did your brother disappear? I can't remember exactly. Was it a few days or was it weeks? Probably a couple of weeks. Did he ever say anything more about the king and queen? Sheila Sorensen said she barely knew Pirello. Oh, man, we must have been blind. The whole time we've been figuring it's got to be a guy. Half the girls I knew wore their boyfriend's jackets. Me too. So why the hell didn't you mention it? Don't yell at me. I'm on vacation. Father? Commissioner Scally, I've been meaning to call you to thank you. For what? For arresting me. For the first time in 35 years, I know what it's like to wake up without dread. And the love my parishioners have shown me since I came back, well, thank you. Uh, when you were in high school, that pretty girl was Sheila Sorensen, wasn't it? And it was Sheila that you, that you... You went at it like bunnies, didn't you? Come on, Padre, you hadn't taken a vow then. Father, we have reason to believe that she was involved in the murder. Maybe even was the murderer herself. When was the last time you saw her? I can't help you, Commissioner, I'm sorry. Why not? I can't answer. A simple yes or no would... You saw her in the confessional. Oh, man, when? Since you got out of jail? Father, did she tell you she killed Stephen Daly? I'm not at liberty to divulge anything. If she killed him, his family has a right to know, and she deserves to be punished for it. Did she tell you? I'm not at liberty to divulge anything. You think she confessed to you to unburden her soul? She couldn't care less. Father, if she killed Stephen Daly, she let you bear the guilt for it for 35 years. I'm not at liberty to divulge anything. She used you for all these years, Padre, and she's using you now. Because she knows once she confesses, you're no longer a threat. 
You can't come forward. You have to understand. I'm not at liberty to divulge anything. My God, Paulie. If he's no longer a threat to Sheila, only one person is. Yes, Laura. Yes? I'm Sheila Sorensen. You don't know me, but I went to school with your brother. I read about what happened to him, and I just want you to know that I always thought he was a wonderful boy. Thank you. In fact, I have a couple of mementos, some things that Stephen gave me. I thought perhaps you'd like to see them. I would. Come in. I've just made a fresh pot. Sounds great. Sheila Sorensen, I think I remember Stephen mentioning your name. Were you good friends? The best. It's funny. With all that's come out in the paper about the case, I thought I would have heard from some other people who knew Stephen. But you're the first. Well, I guess a lot of them moved away. Some are shy, you know, and I guess I'm just a little old busybody. <laughs> Please, sit down. I've been sitting all day. I think I'll just wait for you. I'm so glad you came by. I've been wanting to talk to someone, you know, one of Stephen's contemporaries, to get a perspective I just don't have, you know? Please don't go through any trouble. Oh, it's nothing. Drop that knife, Sheila! Drop it! Why would you want to do this? She killed your brother. While she was wearing Tim Perello's jacket. She was the one you saw. She couldn't risk you remembering any more than you already had. Uh. If we found you with your wrist cut, a suicide, she figured the investigation would be all over. Uh. Come on, let me call you an ambulance. Oh, man, was that pure. You haven't hit it pure since the spring of 69, and even then. Ah, uh, that breeze feels great. I, my foot slipped. It did not. It did. I haven't had this much fun, and I don't remember. Yeah, me too. I should get some gloves, though. No, I mean working with you. It's like... It's like the two musketeers all over again. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? Why don't we keep it going? Why don't you come back here and work with me? Now's the perfect time, it'll be a blast. I don't know. I'm not sure I could stand you in large doses. We were a team before, we'll be a team again. Let me think about it. Well, while you're thinking about it, where's my hundred? For what? Father Perillo was innocent. Pay up, Polly Pants. Maybe he didn't actually kill the kid, but he was a moral accessory. Moral accessory? I never heard of that. Well, that, that's... That's because I just made it up. I mean, he did hit the kid. He left him for dead. And just because Sheila came along and finished off the job. Oh, you're welshing on the bed. Moral accessory is garbage. You're just splitting hairs. Hey, don't talk about hairs, all right? Talk about subjects you got knowledge of. Highly amusing. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. This swing, double or nothing. Ah. All right, all right, all right. Best, best two out of three. Ah. All right. That's three out of five. That's three out of five. That's five out of five.